Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing illustrative math, grade 8, unit number 4, lesson 2. Okay, what have we got here? Which of these changes would keep the hanger in balance? So we're balancing hangers. Adding two circles on the left and a square on the right. If I add two circles on one side and a square on the other, is that balanced? Well, I can see looking at this that they each have a triangle, but then this one has a square and this one has two red circles, so this would actually keep things balanced because two circles weigh the same as one square. Adding two triangles to each side. Well, we're doing the same thing to each side, so that's okay. Adding two circles on the right and a square on the left. Well, if I add two circles on one side and a square to the other, two circles weighs the same as a square. We already talked about that. That works. A circle on the left and a square on the right. Well, circles and squares don't weigh the same. A square weighs twice as much as a circle, so that doesn't work. A triangle on the left and a square on the right. I don't see anything here showing me that a triangle and a square weigh the same. So that's another no-go. Oop, another hanger diagram. Here is a balanced hanger diagram. For each, each triangle weighs two and a half pounds. Each circle weighs three pounds. X represents the weight of each square. Select all equations that represent the hanger. Well, we know triangles are two and a half. We know circles weigh three. Select all the equations that represent the hanger, and we know oh, x is a square. x, 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 x. Okay. So a has four x's and 11. Well, let me check. 3 and 3 is 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes. That is 11. How about this side? 3, 6, 9, 10, 11 and a half. That works. Now, the numbers on both of those match, but this one has 1, 2, 3, 4 x's, and this side has 1. Well, on this hanger, we've got 4 on the left and 2 on the right, so that doesn't work. This would need an extra x right there. 2x equals 0.5. Ooh, that's a little trickier. Well, if I look at this, I could cancel out those and not really worry about them because it's the same on each side. The left has 11 and the right has 11.5. Excuse me, the right has 11.5. I could cancel out 11 on each side and then there would be nothing on the left and 0.5 on the right. So yeah, that works. C, 4x. Ooh, I agree with that. There's 4x on the left. Plus 5, plus 6. Ooh, those are 5 and those are 6. So the left side of that works. C, on the right-hand side, has 2x. Yep, I see 2x's there. Plus 2 and a half. Plus 6. Ooh, that part's not 6. That part was 9. That one almost worked. D and E, we've got a couple more. Let me zoom them out so we can see the whole thing a little better. Okay, D, 2x plus 2.5 equals 3. 
Well, if I cancel out those, I'm left with two and a half or two X's and no X's on the right. So that works. And one has two and a half and one has three. Well, if I cancel out those three pieces there and a matching three pieces on the other side, yeah, I'm left with just the three on that side, so that works. Now, 4x plus 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 3 plus 3. Ooh, 4x plus 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 3 plus 3. That's what I had originally here. How about on the other side? 2x, yep. Plus 2.5, yep. Plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. Yep, that one works. Okay, next, what is the weight of a square? Hello, just a reminder that if you have not brought your breakfast bag back to the cafeteria, please do so before you leave, so breakfast can be delivered in the morning. Thank you. Pesky announcements. You all wanted to listen to that, right? What is the weight of a square if a triangle weighs 4 grams? Well, this is 4, and this is 4. But we can kind of just ignore both of those because it's the same on each side. That's four and that's four, though. What else? Ooh. If I cut off that square and that square, I got rid of the same thing on each side, so it's balanced. Now the right weighs eight, which means the left also has to weigh eight, and that's one square. What is the weight of a square? A square is 8 grams. Ooh, Andre's coming up with puzzles. Andre came up with the following puzzle. I'm three years younger than my brother, and I am two years older than my sister. My mom's age is one less than three times my brother's age. When you add all our ages, you get 87. Well, how would I solve this? Well, I don't know how old he is, so I'm going to say he's X years old. That's what I use to represent a number I don't know, right? Three years younger than his brother. That means his brother is three years older. Which means his brother is his age plus three more, right? He's two years older than his sister, which means his sister is his age but two less. My mom's age is one less than three times my brother's age. How can we do that? Well, the brother's age is x plus 3, right? Because we already called that. One less than three times. So how do we triple this? Well, we multiply it by 3. But the mom is one less than that. When you add up all our ages, well, how do we add these up? Plus signs, duh. You get 87. Okay. Hey, wait just a second here. What's this question B? Jada writes this equation for the sum of the ages. X, ooh, we had an X. X plus 3, ooh, we had X plus 3. X minus 2, ooh, we had X minus 2. 3 times the quantity x plus 3 minus... We had all of that stuff. This is the equation I just came up with. Okay, let's try and solve this puzzle. What are we going to do? Well, x plus x plus 3 is just 2x plus 3, right? Plus the sister, who was x minus 2 
plus the mom. Ooh, the mom is three times X, which is three X. And then three times that three, three times three is nine, minus one equals 87. Anything else we can combine together in here? We have a three X, one more X, and two more X is three, four, five, six. That's six X's. How many numbers have we got? We got a plus three, minus two. Well, three minus two is one. Plus nine, that's 10. Minus one is nine equals 87. I'm gonna rewrite it a little to the side so we got breathing room. Six X minus nine equals 87. Add nine to each side. 6x equals, those canceled, 87 plus 9 is 96. Divide each side by 6, divide that by 6, divide that by 6. x equals, what's 96 divided by 6? 16. What are our ages? So we might have to look at this a little bit more again. Ooh, I'm going to even kind of use that. This says explain the meaning of the variable. Well, the variable is his age, Andre. And we just did a little math and found out that x equals 16. Now, the brother was x plus 3. x plus 3, 19. The sister was x minus 2, 2 years younger, 2 years younger, and 16 is 14. Now, the mom was this, all of this. So x plus three is 19. And then we multiplied it by three, 16 plus three. And then we multiply it by three, and then we subtract one, 56. The mom is 56. When you add up all of our ages, you get 87. Let's double check that this works. Sixteen plus nineteen plus fourteen plus fifty-six. Did I make a mistake? Well, I must have made a mistake. Where could I have made a mistake? See, you're not the only ones who make mistakes. I'm going to erase a whole bunch of this stuff. Because we have our original equation right here where it said Jada writes this equation. Let's group some of these things. How can I group these? Do it in blue, because that doing it in red just makes it look like a mistake. Well, we have 1x here, 1x here, 1x here, 3x is here. 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6x. What have we got for numbers? 3 times 3 is 9. Minus 1. Here is So 9 minus 1 is 8, minus 2 more is 6, plus 3, 
6 plus 3 is 9. So 6x plus 9 equals 87. 6x. To get rid of that 9, we have to subtract 9 from each side. 6x equals 87 subtract 9 is 78. Seventy-eight divided by six is thirteen. X equals thirteen. How many people have been yelling at me for ages because I added nine to this thing? Okay, if X is thirteen, the brother is X plus three, so sixteen. The sister is x minus 2, which is 11. The mom is 3 times the brother minus 1. 16 times 3 is 48. Minus 1 is 47. Let's see if these all add up together right this time. 13 plus 16 plus 11 plus 47 is 87. Write the equation with fewer terms. I did that right here. Solve the puzzle. I did that here twice, but only one of them was right. Okay, I'm going on to the next problem. I'm sick of that one that I got wrong. Who else gets frustrated and sick of a problem when they get it wrong? Don't give up. You'll get there eventually. I did. These two lines are parallel. Write an equation for each one. Okay, first we've got to find the slope. If they're parallel, once we know the slope for one, we know the slope for both because parallel lines have the same slope. Rise is 4, run is 5, y-intercept is 0, y equals 4 fifths x plus 0, but we don't have to bother writing plus 0. Other one, y equals 4 fifths x, same slope because they're parallel, y-intercept well, that one starts at negative 3.2 minus 3.2. Beautiful. Equation of two lines. That problem was way easier than the last one. Okay, that's our last one. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.